I'm old. I grew up at a time when you know, we had television. We even had, I can remember getting the first color television. Uh, but we didn't have a lot of television choices compared to today. We had, you know, basically three main channels, three, six, and 10, Philadelphia, and 12, public television. And the nice thing about that was you didn't have, you didn't have a lot of decisions about what to watch. And you generally watched certain times, certain days, certain shows. Now, what, as I was growing up, most of the movies we saw on TV were on the local syndicated or the local affiliates. You know, CBS would have a movie at 4.30. They'd have another one at 11.30. And most of these were older films from the 30s, 40s, maybe early 50s. The movies that had been out in the late 50s and early 60s. Remember, I started school in 1965. Uh, if you had missed them at the theater, you know, you weren't going to see them. You might see them on TV, uh, but not for a while. At this point, it was rare to see a relatively recent film release, especially a big film release, on television. That changed around that time. Sat, uh, NBC started Saturday night at the movies, and they would show these movies that were only, you know, four to eight years old rather than, you know, 10, 20, 30 years old. And then on Sunday night, ABC started, they didn't call it, Sunday night at the movies, but uh, the, the, the Sunday night movie on ABC or something like that. I forget exactly what it was called. And when you would see these movies, was, you know, a lot of people where you, you'd go to school would see the same things. And this one particular Saturday night, this is important to the story, the movie, or Sunday night, the movie that had been shown on ABC was Spartacus, the one with uh, Kirk Douglas, Gene Simmons, Tony Curtis, Lawrence Olivier, the Holy Ghost Preparatory School outside of Philadelphia, Cornwell's Heights. It was a private Catholic school. Most of the students were day students. We also had seminarians who basically boarded there and they would go from Holy Ghost to Duquesne and then eventually they'd enter the priesthood as Holy Ghost Fathers. I guess Holy Ghost Fathers are most famous for not getting kicked out of France under Napoleon and uh, Eamon de Valera, president of leading Irish Republican figure president was a, somebody was taught by the, uh, the Holy Ghost Father. On Monday, last section was health. There were three freshman sections of 30 students each, fresh, fresh one, two, and three. And we took our classes separately. But on Monday, we all had health together in the cafeteria, basically 90 kids, minus probably a few who were absent that day. The health instructor, I wouldn't call him a teacher because that was a useless. It was a guy named Mulligan, Mr. Mulligan. And he was an unassuming, milk toast uh, kind of guy. Uh, I, I, I don't know how, how you could describe him. It looked like, this would look like a guy, as, if a 13 year old, if I got in a fight with him, I could probably kick his butt. I mean, it, some people uh, it just exude, you know, demand respect from you from their actions. Some demand it with their words. Some people just don't. He was one of those. I mean, I don't think anybody respected that guy. It was, he was like a joke. The whole class was like a joke. He just repeated the stuff that was in the little workbook we had. And basically, the biggest struggle you had was not to fall asleep during class. So you did a lot of the, you know, resting your head like this and closing your eyes so he couldn't see what, that you were asleep. And hopefully, you didn't plop your head, you know, on the desk. So he was droning on and on. And at some point, one of the SEMs came in and delivered a message to him. And he read the message and he looked up at us and he looked like the proverbial deer in the headlight. I mean, he apparently it was some sort of important message, but he, he didn't seem to know what to do next. And we couldn't figure out, you know, what his problem was because I was sitting at a table with other guys and they were like, so finally he said something along the lines of, remember, this is more than 50 years ago, so I can't vouch for every word. These are you know, necessarily perfect quotations. But he said something to the effect that I have a message here from, uh, well, actually he said, I have a message here from Father Brown. Mr. Francis Sobolewski, you know, has to report for detention after this class. And then he looked at us again and he got this dumb again. And we're like, he doesn't know who the hell Sobolewski is. Now, Frank Sobolewski was, uh, he was one of the more popular kids in, among the freshmen. And unlike some of the other popular kids that were in this or that clique, 
so Sobo is his his name is called Frank Francis Frank Sobo Soboleski. Everybody seemed to like him, and he seemed to like everybody. He's a very friendly guy. I mean, I knew him, met him on times we'd see each other long after we graduated, and he's always friendly. We just had our 50th reunion a little over a year ago. He's still the same. I mean, he's still Sobo, and j just a great guy. And he he uh, he's there, and he's got to go to detention. But the problem is Mulligan doesn't know any of us. And he certainly doesn't know Sobolewski. So Mulligan's in this quandary. What does he do? So he reads the note and says, Mr. Sobolewski needs to report for detention. And I guess he's hoping that, you know, Frank's going to say, you know, yes, Mr. Mulligan, I know. Thanks for the reminder or something. But Sobo's not saying anything. And everybody realizes the same thing we realize at our table. He doesn't know who Sobolewski is. That's his problem. He doesn't know what to do. So after a while, he makes a decision and he says, uh, you know, if uh, Mr. Soboleski doesn't identify himself, I'll have to get Father Brown in here. And he, I don't think you guys, you boys want to make him come all the way down here again because the cafeteria was in the basement. And, you know, Father Brown, Father Henry Brown was the disciplinarian. He was a big priest. He didn't wear pants. He wore a cassock. And he'd been in, he joined the priesthood after World War II. He fought, I think, in the Pacific somewhere. He would never give us a lot of details. I mean, if it was traumatic for him, maybe he didn't want to talk about it. But we know, the only thing we did find out, after, I think after I graduated, he'd been on an LSD, a landing ship dock. And that's why he never would tell us what ship he was on, because LSD was an issue then, and it was in the news. And the last thing he wanted with a bunch of, you know, juvenile, immature high school kids is to tell them that he had served in World War II on an LSD. You can imagine the jokes. So nobody wanted Father Brown there. So ultimately, Frank Soboleski, Sobo, he raised his hand and said, you know, Mr. Mulligan, I'm Soboleski. Now, as I said, most people watched the Sunday night movie and the Saturday night movie, you know, Wrong Stones were on uh, uh, Ed Sullivan or the Beatles, or whatever rock group was on, comedians, we'd all pretty much seen the same TV shows. And Sunday night, you watched Sunday night or the, the ABC Sunday night movie. And, you know, you usually had pretty good movies, you know, Bridge Over the River Kwai, Ten Commandments, stuff like that in color. And we had a color TV at home. So I had watched Spartacus and apparently, as you'll see in a second, Basically, everybody in that room had seen the movie Spartacus less than 24 hours before. So when Sobolewski stood up and said, I'm Sobolewski, just as Kirk Douglas had stood up and said, I'm Spartacus, some other, you know, joker in the freshman class, I don't remember who it was, stood up, put his fist up and said, I'm Sobolewski. And then somebody else popped up and said, I'm Sobolewski. And somebody else popped up and said, I'm Sobolewski. And next, next thing you know, you have close to 90 students. There were probably a few, few holdouts that were either too afraid or uh, maybe hadn't seen the movie and they didn't have a clue what was going on. But I knew, and you know, I wasn't the, you know, one of the big shots in the school, but I wasn't that scared. So I was standing up and yelling, I'm Sobolewski. I think everybody at my table was. And eventually, Mr. Mulligan freaks out, panics, runs out of the room, and we knew what was going to happen. It was too early to run to the bus. We'd never get away anyway. Father Brown showed up with Mr. Mulligan. And just like when Tony Curtis said, I'm Spartacus, and they all yelled, I'm Spartacus, and they all got crucified. Father Brown, maybe he'd seen the movie too, and he knew how Lawrence Olivier handled the situation. So... We all got detention, the entire freshman class. It was probably the only time, at least in the history that I'm remembering at that school, where an entire class was given detention, which probably, it may still be a school record. And that's one of my favorite memories among many from Holy Ghost Prep. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Hopefully you got some maybe comic relief out of this as we get toward the end of a, uh, uh, a difficult and stress stressful 
and anxious week. But whatever, after you're done laughing, remember to stand tall, stand firm, and keep fighting.